In this video, we want to take this not contains criteria and filter this data set, but we want to do it with a formula. Now, last two videos, we saw how to do this with Advanced Filter and Power Query. But I know a lot of you viewers like to see formulas. Well, this formula is going to be a crazy array formula. Now, we have to compare this contains criteria to this column. Now, the function we want to use anytime we're trying to see if a subtext string is in a larger text string is the search function. So it could say, hey, find this text. Now, I did put two items there, comma, within what? Well, I'm going to put the whole column here, close parentheses. And if I hit the F9 key, we are just not allowed to compare two vertical columns that are different sizes in an array formula. Control Z. Well, if we can't compare two vertical ranges that are different sizes, if one was vertical and one was horizontal, Array formulas have no problem with that. So I'll transpose just this little part right here. Now I happen to be in Office 365 with spilled arrays. So watch what happens when I hit Enter. I can visually see the spilled array. Now there's two columns because there's two items. For the second record, it found ABC, sure enough. For the fourth record, it found XYZ. And sure enough, there it is. Now, we don't care what number it is. We just want to know if it's a number. So I come back to the uppermost left cell in F2. I'm going to wrap this inside is number, close parentheses. And now when I hit Enter, I get trues and falses. I really want ones and zeros. So before is, I'm going to use double negative. Any math operation will convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. But double negative tends to do it more quickly when we're doing array formulas. Oh, look, there's some formatting there. I'll get rid of that. Now, we do not want them in two separate columns. We want them all in a single column. Now, what I'm about to do to this formula involves matrix algebra and the Mamolt function. Now, I have an amazing video, and I'll leave a link for this at the end, that goes step by step how the Mamolt function does what it's going to do and exactly why. But we're just going to come up to the upper left, and we'll take Mamolt. It takes two arrays, multiplies them using matrix algebra. And the array that we need to gather these two columns into a single column is an array, and I'm going to use curly brackets, one semicolon, and one. Close curly brackets. This is an array that has exactly one column and two rows. Semicolon means go down a row in array syntax. This first array is 17 rows by two columns. Now, we're allowed to multiply these because the columns of the first are equal to the rows of the second. But you're not going to believe this. When I hit Enter, that's exactly what we want. F2. I promise if you go watch that other video, I show you the beautiful details of why this is true. Now, we don't want to hard code this in. I want a dynamic way to create this. So if I add more elements here, if I add, for example, a third one, it would be 111. To do that, we use the row function of this, close parentheses. Row will give us a 6 and a 7, and I really want 11. Well, any number raised to the 0 power is 1. F9, that gives us exactly what we want. But later, when we add more, that will be dynamic. Enter, and I get the same thing. Now, the 1 means it found something. So F2, I'm going to ask the question, hey, when are you equal to 0? And now we have the trues for filtering that data set. Up to the top, F2, and we're going to use one of the new dynamic arrays, filter. The array, well, that's the whole entire data set comma, there's the values to include. That just means the trues and falses for which rows to keep. Now when I hit Enter, there we go. Now I'm going to add some number formatting. Now if I wanted to change how many elements I had here, we did not set this up as an Excel table. Also, I'm going to come up to the top here and use the third argument, comma, and then double quotes, put something like none. That way, when we get an error, it'll say none instead of showing us a calc error. Now, this is not set up to be an expandable range like an Excel table, but watch this trick. Since the formula in here is looking at these two cells, 
and this is the last cell in the range, if I move it, everything internally changed. So now the range is F6 to F8. Now if I change this to AA, now I get excluded any product names that contain any of those elements. All right, bonus trick number two. I know some of you will say, well, how do we do this without filter? There's how you do it. So in this downloaded Excel file, you can check this out, including this counting formula up here. All right, if you want to learn more about the amazing Momolt function, there's a video for you. If you want to learn more about dynamic arrays, here's a great video.